services controlled by the Russians that not only threatened President Yana, uh, Yanukovych to leave, but also the members of the party of regions after they had voted to oust Russia. Why would they do that? Because remember, you've got to make the Ukraine look like it's in Western hands now and controlled, even though it's not. The entire opposition has been created by the Soviets. They control Yulia Tymoshenko and have for years, but she plays up to the West as if she's pro-Western. But Putin and, her, and she have a, a very, very close relationship. And that wouldn't happen if she was truly anti-Russian. And look at Yanukovych's press conference in Russia today, claiming he left only because his life was threatened, and then he was being shot at in his car all along his exit route as he left the country. I'm sorry, Alex, but that just doesn't wash. There aren't but a handful of old hunting rifles in the hands of the opposition. So it's hardly believable they could set up a running ambush on his escape route that nobody knew where he was going or what the escape route was. So what's the bigger strategy? Well, here's the bigger strategy. Remember that, oh, let me just cover one other thing, too. You know, the UK Telegraph says that the Russians admitted that armored units from the Black Sea Fleet based near Sebastopol have entered Crimea in order to protect fleet positions. This is the story that everyone's claiming is Russia's moving troops into the Crimea. This is not true. These are only units that are already at the naval base at Sebastopol, and which is in Crimea. They're not moving into Crimea. They're already there, and they're simply going to other bases to ensure that Russia protects its naval bases. This is not in any way a move by Russian military, and neither are the fighter uh, repositioning. This is all political theater by Putin to make it appear, and the Western media is playing this up as if this is a major thing. So here's, here's the game plan. The Ukrainian opposition, of course, is really opposed to the extreme bureaucracy and evil that remains even during Timoshenko when she was prime minister from 2005 to 2010. Nothing changed. This is typical of when you have a phony coup. That is, the communists were still in charge of all the bureaucracy. Everybody was still requiring bribes to get anything done. Nothing changed. There was no freedom uh, change in the Ukraine or anywhere else in the Soviet Union. And so naturally, the people have had enough, and they really, uh, and it tipped the, the tip of the iceberg when Yanukovych refused to have this trade agreement with the EU. So this was legitimate hatred against Russian domination of Western Ukraine. Now, the problem is this opposition in Ukraine was getting too fervent and, and legitimately so. Yes, there was some flow of Western support in here, but it was not, as Paul Craig Roberts said, a daily handing out of cash. There was one time uh, stiftungs or, or uh, subscription, not subscription, but scholarship money that went to some of the students on the front lines. But I have contacts who were right there on the front lines in Ukraine saying these people are just normal people. They actually, you know, don't have any food. They don't have any money. They are sacrificing because they hate this regime. Most of these protesters were absolutely legitimate. As for the claims that there are neo-Nazis uh, protected and supported by the rest, remember there are no neo-Nazis anywhere in the world, legitimate neo-Nazis. They're only agent provocateurs built up by governments, and Russia does the same thing. They build up, they pay people to become skinheads and neo-Nazis to give the right wing in the world a bad name. And the Russians play this just like the West, because you see, neo-Nazis give them an excuse to attack anyone who's associated with that, with that view. But there's nobody who, who in their right mind wants to go and champion something in the name of the, of the Nazis, unless they're paid uh, you know, for by governments. So we've got to really see through what's going on there. But let me get to the final point, that is, what's the game plan? The opposition was rising much faster than Russia's remilitarization. Russia isn't anywhere near ready to take on the West. And so here's what they've done in order to prolong the conflict in the Ukraine. They pulled a phony coup so that now it appears that Western Ukraine is in the hands of the globalists. But they're not. They're in the hands of... Russian puppets masquerading as pro-EU people, like Timoshenko. You mark my words, she'll be back in power pretty soon. Already the prime, um, prime minister has been named as one of her formal lieutenants, and that shows that her Freedom Party is going to be back 
uh, in power soon. But now, from now on, you're going to have a constant conflict between the Eastern European or uh, Russian base. Tell you what, stay there. I'm going to come back and break this down. Stay with us. Huge Mountain House sale at Emergency Essentials. Right now, get 25% off every can. Go to BePrepared.com for the guaranteed lowest price you'll find anywhere. Mountain House freeze-dried meals are famous for their proven 25-year shelf life, delicious flavors, and easy preparation. Last day is today to save 25% on over 30 Mountain House varieties. For the best selection, call Emergency Essentials at 800-999-1863 or visit BePrepared.com. The choice is clear. Be unprepared or BePrepared.com. The ultimate survival bug out lightweight fishing pole is Emrod. Made by a family owned American company and assembled in Idaho, Emrod fishing gear comes with a lifetime warranty and 90 day money back guarantee. Emrod weighs just 8 ounces and breaks down to 14 inches. Emrod's indestructible stainless steel compact design makes it perfect to take anywhere. Cast your eyes now at Emrod.com. That's E M M R O D.com. Emrod. Fish to survive, survive to fish. Ladies and gentlemen, America is more dangerous than ever with 9 million property crimes last year. Crimes are happening every day. Be proactive and protect your home and family. Simply Safe Home Security System helps guard against criminals, thugs, and thieves. Listen, Simply Safe is the absolute best alarm system and company in America today. Here's why. We offer a 60-day money-back guarantee. It's affordable, no contracts to sign, and is built with the latest wireless technology. Simply Safe protects the ones you love the most, even if a criminal cuts your power and phone lines. When you order Simply Safe today, you'll receive a 10% discount along with a free keychain remote. Don't wait. This offer is only valid through February 28th. Take advantage of this special discount offer at GetSimplySafe.com. That's GetSimplySafe.com. Protect your home and family now at GetSimplySafe.com. American gardeners and fellow patriots make the right choice with your money, time, and your family food supply. Choose 100% pure heirloom seeds in the Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com. Why spend more? The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com is only $37.95 and includes 20 varieties of pure, hardy, easy-to-grow heirloom seeds. Yes, only $37.95. That's 70% less than our competitors. You could buy three Survival Seed Vaults for less than one of theirs. The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com includes detailed planting and seed saving instructions and ship same day. Plus, all orders over $49 ship free. MyPatriotSupply.com is American owned by patriots like you, passionate about freedom and preparedness. Call now, 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Or discover more emergency preparedness items when you order at MyPatriotSupply.com. Choose the original. Choose the survival seed vault at MyPatriotSupply.com. Hi there. My name is Frank Bates. What I'm about to tell you in the next 60 seconds could get me in a lot of trouble. I just created a free video presentation at 123coverup.com that exposes the electricity monopolies and government agencies for what they really are. Incompetent, lying crooks that are counting on your ignorance and fear to keep your power bills criminally high. Some have called this a conspiracy. Others have called it a cover-up, and you will be shocked to find out how deep the conspiracy goes. My video at 123coverup.com exposes the truth and shows you the secret of how I beat them and how you can beat them too. Watch the controversial video that thousands of other smart patriots have already seen in the last three months. Go to 123coverup.com and discover one weird trick to slash your power bill and protect your home. Go watch my video now at 123coverup.com before they force me to shut it down. Again, that's 123coverup.com. to get into what happened in Georgia in 2008. I want to get your take on the forces involved in that because clearly you look at it, that was the West trying to go in and test Russia. Uh, but this, there are a lot of telltale signs that it was staged when the police stood down. The argument was, well, they're doing that to look friendly. Uh, but the rest of the government stood down as well. 
And then I guess the country goes into a permanent destabilization where they can play the literal right and left off the two different sides of the country. Uh, uh, the right from the, the West and the Russian from the, uh, from the East and then just use that as a tool of political control. I know Russia to a certain extent collaborates with the EU, but is against the Anglo-American British US power bloc. Explain the strategy there. Well, the strategy is remember that Russia has always intended to strike the West. They want to run their own new world order with them in control. We've got a temporary pact with China to join with them to control the world and they'll have to fight it out. Whatever, and they don't, haven't gone that far down the road. But the, the goal is to take down the, the hegemony of the West and uh, but they're not ready to do that yet. So what I'm saying is it's very important to understand that in the status quo that was going on before the uh, last Friday and before was that the pro Western Western Ukrainians were the beleaguered ones and Russia was the bad guys. That's all the news kept saying. The Russia has ironclad control of Ukraine and the Westerners want to be free. The Russians are the bad guys. Now it's been reversed. And this is why this really plays to Russia's favor. Because if they want to postpone the eventual taking back of the Soviet states, uh, whether it's Czechoslovakia, Poland, uh, Ukraine, Georgia, etc., instead of playing like they're independent, if they want to take them back with force someday, they've got to wait till they're militarily ready to take on the West, and they're not. So we've got several years that they've got to bide their time. So... But in order to do that, you've got to play the same game that Hitler played by attacking his own people, the Germans in Poland and uh, in uh, Czechoslovakia, in order to justify that intrusion. It's too early for that justification. Everybody keeps thinking Russia's going to attack Ukraine right now to take it back, and it's too early. It's going to make Russia look very, very bad. Uh, they want more disarmament with the West. The West wants more unilateral disarmament with Russia to make sure that they pave the way for this uh, war. And so what they've got to do is slow the process down. Now what happened after uh, Saturday's phony coup? Now the Eastern Russians are the beleaguered people. And it's the Western Ukraine that's going to be the bad guys. That's why they had to have all of the the uh, pro-Russian majority in the Rada and the parliament resign so that now it can be a majority of pro-Western people. They can get the blame for everything. Plus the fact this allows the West to come to the rescue of Ukraine's bankruptcy. I mean, Ukraine is literally bankrupt. So they instituted currency controls today. The West, just like in the former Soviet Union, they're going to take over all of the payments and give bailout money to them. Russians are loving this. Um, but the most important thing to remember now is that for now on in advance, the Russian, uh, the Western, the phony opposition, these are run by Russians, but they're going to be claiming to be pro-EU. They're going to get the blame for everything that happens now. You're not going to see Eastern Ukraine and the Crimea secede. You're not going to see ind independence. And here's why. If they were to become independent, these majoritarian Russian populations in eastern Ukraine and Crimea, everybody would be happy. The Western Ukrainians would be happy, and so would the Easterns, and you wouldn't have conflict anymore. What you're going to see is Russia's going to accept some sort of some type of federalization, which means that uh, they're going to be federalized under a Ukrainian nation, but that means that the eastern portions will always be able to complain in the future about being underrepresented and, and oppressed by the dominant Western government. And eventually they can tweak that with protesters and with the ongoing unrest so that in a couple of years, maybe three or four years, when they do want to take back Ukraine, they'll have the justification to do that. So do you see what I'm saying? You're going to have a much better permanent system of conflict by allowing Western Ukraine to go in, ostensibly to go into Western hands, when in fact it is Russian puppets playing as if they're in Western hands. I want to come back and talk about Georgia and then take phone calls on the waterfront about uh, strategy of the globalist, where you see that going. Michael wants to ask you about U.S. flags being banned in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals if the illegals find them offensive. Ray wants to uh, ask you some other questions. Folks want to ask about smart tech and all the surveillance grid, the NSA.
So Joel Scalzen of WorldAffairsBrief.com is our guest. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com on this live Friday edition. And I'll be back this Sunday, Lord willing, 4 to 6 p.m. with the Sunday live transmission right here on GCN. We're on the march.